This is a slide presentation that I put together for my uh, CAD CAM programming uh, class. Call it uh, foundational material and common and not so common knowledge. Uh, it's a discussion and gets the uh, the intro so that we're all on the same page when we start looking at the manufacturing process. But I also find it has value in the mechanical design and engineering if you haven't seen the uh, the process or the tools or some of the things that are available then it ultimately affects your designs and you get kind of the the strange look of well why did you do it that way when the tool can't make that or yeah we could 3d print that but it's not going to be a production item and um, go through the um, you know through that whole experience thing again all right so um, Item one is our biases uh, to the uh, the tools. We're going to look at work holding. Uh, don't really need to do the speeds and feeds, but we'll mention that um, you know the, how the, how some of those things are calculated and machine operations and tooling. And we'll kind of uh, kind of go from uh, from there. So, well, I guess I can't spell, or I managed to delete something there. All right, we'll go ahead and fix that then. <laughs> And um, so everybody has preferences. Uh, when I say uh, bias, we have our preferences, our in effect, our prejudices, um, and um, it comes with machines. I've learned I learned on Haas, um, but I have tried not to shy away from learning uh, the he and CNC router, the uh, the wiki CNC router, the uh, Miltronics, the, um, you know, any, anything that's been put in front of me, I spend, um, a week or two with it and learn its, uh, learn its capabilities, but I don't go in expecting that the more Seeky is going to be the same as, as a jet, you know, it's just not, not practical. So, um, and most most companies are not going to turn you loose as a machinist um, with a uh, you know a quarter million dollar machine or a million dollar machine uh, doing uh, high high tech parts with uh, without at least some some experience. Uh, same with the tools. There's different qualities of carbide and uh, cobalt and high speed steel, and so some of the tools are OSG hurdle precision twist. Sadvik, uh, Seiko, and AccuPro, and uh, get kind of a find out what works, but we always kind of uh, look for, you know, say, look for the uh, the industry um, uh, uh, retail or providers that uh, we can um, uh, order order different tooling and see if it works better, and always be prepared to uh, to look for that. Uh, that next uh, next generation of tool. Same with the software is I've had plenty of people of oh I don't want to use um, you know I use Mastercam I don't want to use HSM or I use um, SolidCam I don't want to use Cam SolidWorks Cam or CamWorks. We are moving away from standalone and going towards more integrated. Mastercam Mastercam Solids. Uh, cam works and SolidWorks Cam live inside of S SolidWorks. Master Cam still has a standalone. Solid Cam lives inside of SolidWorks and um, some other programs. HSM lives inside of SolidWorks. Surf Cam standalone. Feature Cam standalone. And I'll mention Bobcat. It's kind of a there's there's still kind of a, a collective groan when you men, mention Bobcat, and I and don't know that that's a fair analysis. The software has come a long ways, and uh, its early reputation still follows it. So uh, if it makes good code, and the software is um, is reasonably usable, it's better than sitting and typing it out in Notepad and trying to generate all that code uh, by hand. Uh, same thing with the uh, the solid modelers. Uh, we mentioned SolidWorks, Katia, our sister companies, Inventor, Fusion 360. And I'll throw AutoCAD in there because it's part of the Autodesk, but AutoCAD is 2D. We're in the 3D world uh, dealing with um, you know, a kind of a kind of higher level design. 
Um, I started with AutoCAD in 1998 and, and uh, have uh, and used it for about 10 years until I discovered uh, 3D modeling and SolidWorks. Um, and I'm not uh, opposed to going back and using AutoCAD. I just know that uh, I'm not going to be as, as efficient. Uh, so I would go to Inventor. Um, I've used Inventor. I've used Fusion 360. It's a little bit of a change, but you know, one of the things that uh, I'm not going to let it, if it came down to uh, getting a job or not getting a job, I would not let uh, the software prevent me from uh, going after that job. I would learn a little bit about it or utilize it and then uh, go from there. So I mentioned uh, NX, Solid Edge, uh, PTC, Pro E, Creo. Uh, so yeah, everybody has the preferences. We have many manufacturing choices to make. This really is a thousand, thousands and thousands of tiny decisions that all build up and uh, end up uh, affecting the end product. Uh, we should be prepared to try to learn and explore before those preferences become so ingrained we can't escape the bias. There is no best, only what works. Um, so each of these brands is uh, capable of producing an emotional response of bias, but they are just brands. All right, so tools, when we talk about drilling, there are jobber length, screw machine, extended parabolic ream tap. So the jargon of machining is subcategories and subcategories mills facing roughing finishing taper insert thread mills form tools mill drills round uh, roundovers t slots slitting saws convex uh, concave cutters if uh, we need to make the geometry then there's probably a tool to do it so uh, there's a lot of information that follows this cultural this technolo uh, technical knowledge um, do not assume that you've seen or heard of common tooling. Really, there is no common tooling. If you go to uh, MSC Direct, and I'll put the um, uh, some of the links in here, you go to McMaster, you go to um, any of the uh, the common uh, tool providers, um, or the most uh, <laughs> the most readily available tool providers, and you're going to see thousands of pages of tools. So uh, varieties of names that denote the general characteristics. Uh, we'll refer to many of these uh, characteristics during the machine uh, operations and tooling. And mainly what we're looking at is the material of the tool, the diameter, number of flutes, length of cut. All right, so for the drills, screw machine length is more rigid. It has less flute length, but it also is going to generate less harmonic, less singing as it uh, uh, goes into the um, uh, drills the uh, the hole. Jobber length a little bit longer and then extension and you can get drills that go pretty darn long but as you get get longer um, it's going to uh, want to uh, maybe wobble make the hole a little bit oversized so there is a process where you start with a screen screw machine get the um, the base started and then maybe go to a jobber length, use all of its flute, and then step up in those drills to drill really deep holes. Getting into some of the um, the twist versus the uh, the parabolic, there's just a little bit of difference in the um, uh, the tip geometry and the ejection of the uh, the chip. So parabolics are much more aggressive; they're a production, and um, we. Typically, we'll try to not go over one times the the diameter. So, if it's a quarter inch uh, drill, I would I would stop it. Um, I would make pecs of not more than a, a quarter of an inch. And whereas the parabolic chip can go one to seven times the diameter, depending on the material. So, it can drill a very accurate hole very fast, but it also costs more. Uh, taps, so you have different varieties of taps that will generate uh, the threads, and so these are all quarter twenty taps. When we talk about the um, uh, the tap and thread formulas, uh, the quarter inch is the major diameter, twenty is the number of threads per inch, so the pitch of the um, um, of the uh, the tap. So uh, bottoming fast spiral doesn't have a uh, point this tends to eject the chips up. 
uh, fast spiral with the, uh, the the point. So bottom is going to get a little closer to the, um, the to a blind hole to the bottom of a blind hole. Uh, the spiral point is usually going to be through, or we're going to have to leave enough room for the chips that get pushed, mainly on these guys, uh, but any of the chips to uh, to have clearance and eject out of the uh, the hole. Uh, ten coated um, spiral, so this tends to push the chip ahead of the uh, the flute where this pulls it up, and the ten coating gives it a little more lubricity where the bright finish. Um, is just a, a standard material, no additional coating, pretty much the same tap. And uh, then we get to the roll form and kind of see that uh, this is a continuous thread and there's just a little bit of relief down through the middle. And the roll form displaces, so it actually generates a stronger thread since these are shearing the material. Problem is that the minor diameter, the pitch diameter, is... Um, uh, not as controllable or as measurable, so it is not um, in mill specs and a lot of aerospace. Uh, they're not going to allow the uh, uh, the thread form. All right, some different uh, high-speed steel end mills. All right, so a 45-degree helix, a roughing cut is going to break the chip into a bunch of smaller chips, where this will make a longer, stringier chip. Uh, a 30 degree helix with a little more flute length and then um, that looks like a, a, a stub or a little bit um, well I guess I should read my descriptions <laughs> ski cut uh, the roughing with 30 degree the extended length 30 degree and then the standard length very similar but because they generate different harmonics and have different cutting capabilities um, they'll they'll achieve different results Facing and uh, fly cutters, so the different tools, multi-flute inserts, but as these spin, that part comes around and it makes a very, um, very flat, uh, very clean surface. And then uh, carbide end mills and holders, so these are the CNC holders. Um, there is a fixed holder, the set screw comes from the side, which tends to side load the tool. There's usually a couple of tenths of a thousandth of clearance, and by side loading it, you're creating a little bit of uh, of run out. There's, it's not going to be um, be perfect, but you're going to get a lot more rigidity. This this is an ER32 collet, which is a compression spring collet. As the nut tightens, it presses down onto the tool. And this is going to give you very accurate, but in a heavy loaded situation, I have had these tools start to pull out. And so you have a pretty much a stub length with about an inch, inch and a quarter length of cut, and then an extended length, three inch line, length of cut with, again, those aggressive aluminum, uh, very specific um, geometries for the, uh, for the material. And then uh, some different uh, end mills. Um, extended length ball end mills, uh, shoulder, relieve shoulders, and then the uh, the lollipop uh, 270 degree for undercuts. So different geometries that we can uh, can work with. And so when we talk about the uh, the mold core cavity for three axis program, that tool set was to be able to do this uh, this geometry. And when the two pieces go, it made this. Uh, this uh, shape. Uh, for wood tools, you have a different, still a lot of the same materials, high-speed steel carbide. Um, you have the brad point, and um, then a, a single flute, and then also a single flute brazed. And then one of the other uh, things that you'll uh, you'll find with uh, wood is that they'll have up shear. Uh, up down shear, and then down shear. So you have to be a little careful when you uh, when you see those tools that uh, you're running them uh, correctly and probably even though they could be used for steel they shouldn't. <laughs> Mill drills have a 90 degree point and can be used for chamfering and also for for milling and uh, to a certain extent we'll use them for engraving. Uh, form tools so <clears throat> the uh, concave makes a roundover the convex 
I'm getting those backwards probably, but going to make a, uh, a different type of uh, undercut for grooves. Slitting saws for uh, relieving material. And in the case of uh, I needed um, uh, a lot of rigidity for this, uh, I want to say that was 20 or 25 thousandths thickness jeweler's saw that um, I ended up making a, an arbor for it so that I could run that into uh, to tool steel and make a bunch of little uh, a bunch of little slits. Thread mills, and this is single. There are thread mills that have stacks of uh, of those points in them. They are dedicated to pitch where this will make a helix and cut the thread in a continuous path. It takes a little bit longer, but you can get a wide variety of um, of threads out of uh, out of one tool. Custom form tools, ream to counterbore for uh, for relief, and then also drill to countersink in one operation. Drill chucks, so a key drill chuck, and then keyless drill chucks. The um, one of the issues with the um, between the keyed and the keyless is that with regenerative braking, uh, you either have to get these keyless chucks really tight so that uh, when the um, the spindle starts winding down when it regenerative breaks it doesn't loosen up the chuck I've had tools fall out as the tool was uh, was spinning because I didn't get the chuck tight enough so for the CNC if I'm going to use drill chucks I'm going to tend to the uh, go to the Jacob style chuck with a uh, with a key and get that extra little bit on it and they don't have the same tendency to uh, to loosen up and um, since we uh, we run under the uh, evaps uh, quite a bit, you'll see that these do have a tendency to rust. We go through a lot of WD-40 to clean those up. And um, the ER collet mentioned, the nut goes over the uh, the top, compresses uh, compresses down on the other uh, part. Each of the tools will have a pull stud, and the pull stud is different for quite a few machines. Um, and then a smaller ER-16, this, where this is an ER-32. Uh, There's also 20s, 40s, you can get a, a and that denotes the other uh, range. So this will go from about, um, I want to say half a millimeter up to 10 millimeters, uh, 40 thousandths to about 3 eighths, where these will go from uh, 1 millimeter, 40 thousandths, all the way up to 3 quarters of an inch. But you have a larger larger nut to be uh, concerned with uh, collision. Alright, so a variety of tools. Each of these tool holders is between $75 and $150. You throw a drill chuck on top of it, the drill chuck can be another $100. Tooling represents a significant investment in, uh, in your manufacturability. Alright, so work holding. We'll look at the, um, at the vices, hard jaws, soft jaws, um, dedicated fixtures versus universal, again, collets, and uh, we'll probably finish up with uh, with those guys. So Carlene is a, a good resource for a lot of the uh, the fixturing, and the fixture design principles is a, is a nice uh, nice one to check out. All right, so multiple vices on a subplate, and then some of the different uh, work stops that we'll be looking at um, one that clamps to the uh, to the jaws and one that hangs off the, the side and gives you a little bit more room. The main thing with the work stop is that's going to provide repeatability from part to part. Once we set our coordinate system on one of these parts, it will pretty much be the same within you know thousandths, if not tenths of a thousandth, uh, from part to part. Soft jaws are aluminum or steel blanks that have geometry cut into them and are going to provide the repeatability. So for medium, low to medium production, under a thousand parts, we'll go with the aluminum, but as I close up onto, these were for a 4130 part, so as I close up on this, that steel is going to tend to compress and deform the aluminum, and over the course of, um, you know, several several hundred parts, this is going to start to shift a little bit on on its coordinate system. So high production we would go into a, uh, a heavier duty steel. For the uh, tooling plates, these are just um, fixtures that uh, serve a generic uh, size with a bunch of dowel pins and 
quarter 20 holes and they can vary and we treat them as sacrificial plates we make these and we use them and I can cut into it uh, this plate started off at one inch uh, about 20 years ago and I would say it's uh, somewhere in the range of uh, 840 to about 870 right now I'd have to measure it again but you know you get that uh, that reusability and this is where we start looking at the you know the crossover of the uh, the datums from uh, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing to the uh, to the mechanical design to the fixture and so this plate if we take the fly cutter and run across and establish this surface as flat and as we can get it then that provides our primary there's two points two pins that are in alignment that provide our secondary and a third pin that creates the tertiary and so what this is doing if the material is a little oversized and I program to that corner I again have repeatability because I'm pushing that part into those pins and then clamping it down running one side and then changing the clamps over to hold down the other side one of the problems this shows two clamps uh, two clamps would be the minimum one clamp would allow an orbit two clamps provide um, a pivot and three clamps come back to those constraints three clamps are going to give me the maximum constraint that they um, won't won't uh, move I can still overcome the clamps and pull the uh, the part out and tool out uh, with the tool um, but it's less likely with more than one uh, more than one clamp a larger plate we'll put in a few more clamps just to uh, uh, to make sure we're not getting harmonic vibration as the tool is cutting round tools uh, as it's spinning are going to generate that frequency and uh, if we don't have enough constraint on our um, on our plate then we're going to see chatter marks we're going to see a, the, the finish start to suffer so this finishes what the uh, the fly cut generates and it's pretty reflective you can kind of see the little swirl marks in both directions and then um, this uh, was the um, the larger uh, plate quarter 20s and um, and dowel quarter inch dowels and then it can make as small as 440 and eighth inch dowel pins have a vertical collet closer that will hold round stock in a horizontal or vertical position we also mount a three jaw chuck in a vertical so that we can again hold round stock in a uh, out of position uh, angle plates for 90 degrees the different types of toe clamps so these are all quarter inch but they go um, three eighths and half inch probably as big as um, um, as big as you can uh, make your uh, fixtures and bolts toggle clamps or four link also uh, Desteco um, Desteco I believe but Mighty Bite so Mighty Bites are eccentric and downforce clamps which work pretty well but they're also going to contact the material and may have a tendency to leave marks or um, uh, impressions in the uh, the stock all right and then clamping force this had a, uh, a saw cut and even though it was only about 10 or 15 thousandths narrower on this side uh, the tool came around it made a change in tone and when I stopped the machine it was that far from throwing it out of the vise so uh, you know non non parallel sides the floating jaw doesn't clamp across both faces this floating jaw will uh, have some uh, angularity that it can adjust for but not that much all right so speeds in rpm and the the formula that we work with is we're going from feet per minute to um, to rpm so 12 uh, 12 inches per foot times the cutting speed uh, divided by pi times the diameter the circumference of the uh, of the uh, the tool all right so um, it reduces to approximately four gives us a little bit of variation but it makes the formula simpler and gets us close enough when we do those uh, those values then um, we're looking at uh, different uh, uh, cutting speeds for the um, for the materials so we go to the machinery's handbook we go to uh, the internet we look up uh, manufacturers recommendations and we'll look at um, what the material is to come up with a starting RPM nothing replaces observe and react if it's um, 
making noise, if it's grumbling, tool's dull, the machine's not rigid enough, we have to make all those determinations and that's where the feel and the experience comes in. Um, so for high speed steel and then we multiply three to five times for carbide. Oops. And then to come up with a feed rate, we're taking that RPM times the number of teeth and the chip load per tooth, depending on whether we're roughing and finishing, then uh, that will come up for an inch per minute feed rate. And then reaming has its rule of half the speed, twice the feed. And the life of the cutting tool is most affected by cutting speed, then by feed rate, and least of all by depth of cut. Um, depth of cut comes in that if these are too high, you will load up the uh, the flutes, and flutes that um, uh, can't cut usually um, ends up breaking the tool. All right, threading. So we're going to run through these. This is a whole discussion unto itself, but uh, machine threads are number zeros or aughts, uh down to whatever quadruple or aughts, really small uh, uh, threads, all the way up through number 12. Beyond number 12, we go to fractional quarter inch and up. And then we have the metric threads. So I'm going to save all of this. You want to take a quick look at it. These are the formulas that, rather than carry a machinery's handbook around with you, this will get you uh, much of the information that you need to deal with most of the common threads. All right, an MOT, uh, machine operations and tooling, CAD drawings or models. How many are we making? What is the quantity that we're producing? Uh, material, what kind, size and condition? The envelope of the uh, the machines, available equipment to run it, personnel and their experience, cost of operation for a machine, the rigidity, and then we come back to the three we just discussed, working, work holding, tooling, and RPM. All right, so how do we get there? You've, we're going to be dealing mainly with the CAD drawings, but some of these are the crossover uh, conditions of how many am I designing for one part, uh, oh well, I mean, I may take some, cut some corners and get it done. If I'm designing for um, thousands or millions of parts, then I want this to be as efficient as possible. And then picking the material, knowing what the um, uh, the environmental conditions. So set up and run, and we have axis designators, location, uh, work offsets, tool offsets, and indicators, and then the um, the designations, all right, so two axis, position for X and Y, the operator controls Z, and C and C, two and a half axis, position in X and Y, and we'll move in Z um, somewhat independently, X and Y simultaneous, but Z, yeah, I guess it doesn't uh, it doesn't start out to do all three. three. Three axis is the same thing. So the mold that we saw earlier would be uh, three axis on its uh, operation. Fourth axis to position, two and a half axis plus rotation. And then fourth axis simultaneous, three axis plus rotation so that um, it can create those shapes. Five axis to position, basically cutting five sides of the cube. And then five axis simultaneous, being able to, when you see those impellers and stators and all the fun, uh, really uh, wild geometries, those are usually um, five axis. And machines can have more axis. Um, there are tool grinders that have eight axis of axes of movement to, uh, to make the cuts. So again, the work stops, you can have the different work stops. So we would choose one of these. I wouldn't use both. If I was using this one, I would take that one off. Uh, this one might be out of the way. Pretty much you would not want it in the line of the tool, whatever we're, uh, we're cutting. And then this one mounts to the, uh, the table and um, has a variable length on the, uh, the extension. For location, we have uh, various edge finders. So wigglers, wobblers. Uh, the fix holder again is less desirable because it has that little bit of clearance and run out. The R would be better. I have the electronic. One of the uh, the issues with electronic is I usually get a uh, thou thou and a half of run out on this tip. Um, it's just kind of haven't haven't been able to um, uh, to overcome it. But this is going to be very fast for that oversized plate. <clears throat> where it's not um, not super critical and also this is going to allow for a touch off in Z 
and then you get into the probe style this will also do x y and z and as this probe moves over the dial comes around and when it um, comes up to zero then you are one hundred thousandths over the edge of the part and uh, it will um, fix up complete <coughs> um, for the uh, for the zero a pin stop or a floating pin stop uh, this comes into position program it to go to a known location bank the uh, the material up against it close the vise the pin moves away goes and does a tool change and then it um, when it uh, goes to machine I can machine both sides of the uh, the part and then we'll uh, we'll finish up with the uh, the coax I'll see what the next topic is but we'll probably finish up with the coaxial indicator so this is going to sweep the inside of a bore or the external portion of a pin and as we move the X and Y this needle will move back and forth and when the needle gets to be stationary we are right over the top of the part all right, so we're going to stop at the uh, the cookbook, and hopefully this has given you some uh, some insight to a lot of the uh, uh, manufacturing uh, processes.